guys what's good welcome back to the video so in this video i'm going to be telling you guys how i build out my running shoe rotation i'll show you guys my running shoe rotation and even that even how to save some money while building out your running shoe rotation so let's go outside and i'll show you guys my running shoe rotation I just finished sorting out all my running shoes. I'm gonna show you the categories I put them in and why they're there. First category, the race day category. I got four shoes over there. My Nectar Sense, Adidas, Sub 2s, and my two spikes. Next category is the long run category. I got my Zoom Flies and Nike Vomero 14s. Where's the easy day category? I got a pair of Peg 35s, the Nike Infinity Run Fly Nets and another pair of peg 35s easy to shoes. this is my steady run category this category i'm not going so i'm not going super fast and i'm not going like easy i got the peg 36s i got the nike air zoom terror tiger 5s which are a trail running shoe that's why they're pretty dirty and i got another pair of zoom flies there are another pair of zoom flies in the long run category but i can i also like this shoe for steady runs as well last category is in tempo run category you got the nike air zoom pegasus turbo 2s and you got the nike air zoom pegasus 35 turbos for the tempo run category that is my running shoe category and the shoes that are there i think i have a pretty strong running shoe rotation you don't need that, you don't need all these running shoes, but I run a lot, and just some stats. I ran 232 miles in the month of February, and in 2020 so far, I've ran over 500 miles. So I do run a lot, and this is like an investment. So having this many running shoes, it can it does benefit me, but if you don't run a lot, like you run maybe like 20 miles a week, 15 miles a week, you don't really need all this, you really need one pair of shoes, but overall, I think my running rotation is extremely strong. This is the part of the video where I tell you how to build out your running shoe rotation, and I'm also going to tell you how I build out my running shoe rotation. So first off, I don't think you need a lot of pair, like 10, 15 pairs of running shoes if you're only running like two or three times a week. You just need one just simple pair of trainers, maybe like trainers like 70 bucks or something. But if you're not taking it seriously, like you're, if you're not running a lot, if you're not racing a lot, I don't think you need to have like a different shoe for every single type of run. And also like running shoes aren't exactly the cheapest. They're not like a basketball that are like 20 bucks or like a baseball that's like 2 bucks. They can climb into the $250 range, so... Make sure you're serious about the sport before you thinking before you think about building out your running shoe rotation. So first off, the first sort of like two columns are either trail or road shoes. This is a road shoe, this is a trail shoe. They have a pretty big difference in them. I'm not going to explain that. There's like a bunch of differences. But also you may th be thinking what about spikes? Um cross country spikes. I consider that to be in the trail category. Because in cross country, you're either running on grass or you're running on like r like dirt. And water trails may have dirt. Sometimes you might have to cross like a gravel road. I've, done, I've had to done that before in cross country races. But you're only doing that for like two steps. It's not going to make a big difference. And as I said before, if you're not serious about running, I, would, I wouldn't recommend getting a cross country spike. You can just use like a simple pair of trainers. And the other column is road, like the um concrete uh asphalt all those like different surfaces to run on so either road or trail that's the first sort of column the next column is neutral or stability so a neutral shoe is if you don't over pronate so there's like a big definition of over pronate i'll just explain that in another vlog like what shoes to get if you have and what is it but basically, neutral shoes, I have all neutral shoes, I don't have a single stability shoe, because I think I have great running form. I went to a running camp, and the coach said that my running form is perfect, except that I sometimes look down at the ground and not forward. That's the one thing I, I do have to work on, but if I just keep my vision forward, he said I want to have perfect running form. And I do believe I have perfect running form, too. If you look at me running uh, through YouTube videos, or if you see me out running, but... 
Neutral stability, that's the second column that can make a big difference because if you if you overprone it and get a neutral shoe, you're going to probably have problems with that shoe. So I think that also plays a big role. I think this is the biggest like factor right here into buying it is the brand. So there's something called stack height in a shoe. Over here, this is the stack height, the midsole stack height. So there's different companies that have big stack heights, like big stack heights, very little stack heights, and like medium stack heights. So for example, some of those companies, Hoka One One, they're like, um, I actually have the slide, I have their slides on right now. Like very very thick stack height. That's the same in their shoes and their recovery gear, all that stuff. Um, Mini like medium stack heights. Nike's a great example for that. Like as you see, it's not like too small. It's not too big. It's like right in the middle. That's where I like it, and that's where that's one of the reasons why I love Nike. And there's minimalist stack height. Um, I don't have my Adidas sub twos out here, but they have a very very small midsole. Um, on them. Actually, I'll go get those right now. I'm back with the Adidas shoe. So this Adidas shoe, it has a very very small stack height. Unlike, I'll take out the turbos over here. So, if you notice the two stack heights, this one is a lot more smaller, and that's called a minimalist stack height shoe. This shoe does not protect you on if you're going like long. You're definitely gonna feel the pound if you're going on like a longer run. You're definitely gonna feel the pounding of this shoe, and it just doesn't protect your legs, feet, all that stuff. Um, but, you know, if you like ground contact feel, the shoe would be great for you. But if you don't like feeling the ground, Hoke is a great brand for you. Just like all these different brands out there. It actually makes buying running shoes pretty enjoyable because you have all these different brands competing for each other. But, yeah, there's things that stand different brands out. For example, stack height, upper outsole, like this outsole, and this outsole. Two completely different outsoles, so... The brand definitely does. The brand definitely does come in effect to when you when you're buying running shoes. I'll put this over here. So the last last but not least are the type of runs you're going to be doing with the shoe. So there are five categories: race. Um, sorry, I'm looking at something. Race, long run, tempo, easy, and steady run. There are more. You can add like lactate threshold intervals but I just mix those in with like tempos and whatnot um, but like some shoes are great for certain tasks some shoes aren't for example the Nike Pegasus 36 this shoe I think is a great all-around shoe I think if I were to recommend someone who's like starting out with running with for a shoe I would pick this shoe. This shoe, um, it can get a lot of stuff done. I've done workouts in this that are like, that were running at 5, 10 a mile. And yeah, I've done long runs at 14 miles for like 8 minutes a mile. So definitely what type of run you're going to be doing does affect it because you don't want to buy um, a very, very like thin shoe for like if you're going on a 20 mile long run. You want to have definitely some support and some cushion in there to help save your legs at the end and you don't want to buy like a 10 ounce shoe for if you're going to be running a sub 17 5k like the Vaporfly and X% that's a great shoe but if you're going to do a very fast 5k the Nike Zoom Flies might not be the best option because it is a pretty heavy shoe same with the Nike Vomero 14s so just the type of run you're doing can also, will also affect what shoe you want to purchase um, so yeah, this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more vlogs. I am right now at my desk and I was editing the YouTube video when I found out I forgot to mention how to save money when purchasing your next running shoes. So, starting with number one, you should go to runningwarehouse.com. I'll put a link in the description, men and women. So basically, Running Warehouse has a clearance section. It's usually right on the first page, and you can find all different kinds of shoes, different like stack heights, brands, um, anything. You can find clearance shoes for that. So Running Warehouse is a great website for that. The second is you should you, you should buy shoes that have been on the market for a while. 
For example, the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. This shoe came out in 2018, and right now it is sitting on Nike.com for $186, when the actual price is $250. They're doing this because they want to get that shoe out because they're bringing in the Nike Alpha Flies in. So, because they don't want to keep that shoe and just have it sit there and have like their shoes that are like really selling good. So, they just dropped that price hoping that buyers would buy it. And they just do that just to get that inventory out. So, definitely go, definitely buy shoes that have been on the market for a good amount of time. And last but not least, you should use promo codes. So promo codes like on Nike, Asics, Hoka, Sockney, they, they all usually have promo codes. I know Nike usually has a promo code about like once a month and it usually always applies to running shoes. So that's a nice easy way to save money without like any hassle. Just type in the promo code and you save like 20, 30 bucks, who knows. But yeah, this is officially the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more YouTube videos.